had an answer for it. No matter what happened, he had something to say. One night he was preaching, and a fly flew in his mouth. And he spit, and he gagged, and he said, got to spit the fly out. People was watching to see what he said. He said he was a stranger, and I took him in. So... Sometimes, sometimes, beloved, it's just like that. Amen. All things through Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? amen. Trying to see where I... Let's go to Matthew chapter 7 this morning. Okay. I had a, I, I've got a whole one here from, from Isaiah, but you're not getting that in this morning. You might want to say thank you, Lord. I don't Thanks, know. God. I'm sorry. I want you to know that God is a good God. And that's what we're, we're talking about this morning. Jehovah Jireh. Our provider and God provides. I believe, bless us, God, this morning, the word for just a few minutes together, Lord. God, feed us the richness, God, of your word. Let us have the cream that comes to the top today, Lord. And God, not because of a man that would speak, but because of the Spirit of God that would speak deeply and directly into our hearts. And God would, would give us good things today, Lord. And we give you all kinds of praise and thanks. What you've done here this morning, God. All praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 7. The scripture says our Savior is speaking. He says, ask and it shall be given you. Ask and it shall. Yeah. Shall sounds like it's a pretty positive yeah. thing. Yeah. Give the verb. It shall be given you. And seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth. And him that knocketh it shall be opened. What man is there of you, whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Unless you think he's calling you evil, you've been saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you need to understand that. He's speaking to the multitude here. Okay? And therefore all things whatsoever he would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets, all right? The golden rule right there. Whatever you want done to you, do you do to others. Now, as we talk about the goodness of God this morning, we've gone back through a, a few scriptures. We know that God is revealed as a provider, as Jehovah Jireh in Genesis. Uh, he's in a chapter, what was it, 22, when, when Abraham offered up Isaac, that, and he had nothing to give but his son. There was a ram in the thicket behind him, and he caught that ram, and, and he took and offered up in the place of his son. And God provided a ram, amen? I mean, know that God has provided a lamb for you and for me, amen? God has provided Christ. Get in the praise. He provided a lamb. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. See, he doesn't just provide money for your pocket. He provides all things, amen, that we need. He gives us all things, the scripture says, richly to enjoy. He doesn't give stingily. He doesn't give grudgingly. He doesn't give a, a, a small amount. God gives abundantly, amen? Aren't you glad for the abundance of God and the goodness of God that, that God doesn't wish you to come behind in anything or any gift waiting for the coming of our Savior? And God came through for Abraham in a magnificent way. And he found out that God was his provider, amen? And how knew that God is a God that provides for our needs also? We're told in 2 Corinthians, if we will abide in Christ, that God is able to make all, all it says like this, that God is able to make all sufficiency abound towards us, that we have all sufficiency in all things. We can do the will of God, amen? And I know that God will give you what you need. If you need a Savior, you can have a Savior this morning. You need a healer, you can have a healer. If you need a, if you need someone to bless you, God will bless you. Amen. And we need to allow God to bring the blessing into our life. Now I'm not talking about some of these guys that, that go out and they try to say that God wants us all to be rich. I didn't say that. I said that God wants to meet your needs and give you enough to do the will of God. I'll say it right now that if the will of God takes a million dollars a month for your life, God will give you a million dollars. If God's will takes a thousand dollars a month for you, God will give you a thousand. Whatever it is for you to do the will of God, God will give you the will of God. Are you hearing this today? And, and listen, understand that when God gives it to you, as I said before, it's not to consume upon our own lust, but it is to meet our needs and then for us to turn around and use a portion of that, not only worship to God as part of it goes, the tithe and the offering, but then to give up to others that have needs within their life. That's the Christian life that we're going to share with one another. Amen? And God wants us all to work. He wants us all to have something to do. 
and the body of Christ. Amen. He's able to make all sufficiency abound towards us. Now, we saw in Romans when we were preaching this that, that you know, he that offered up his own son for us, how shall he freely, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? I know God up offered up Jesus for you and I. And then for with Jesus, he now will freely give us all things. If God gave his only begotten son the most precious thing that he had, what do you think that God would hold from you? He gave Jesus for you and he gave Jesus for me. He couldn't have given you anything better. I, I remember when I preached my first message, I read this somewhere and I used it and said, you know, God's a lot like Hallmark. When he gave, when he cured enough to give, he cured enough to give the very best. Amen. He gave the best that heaven had to offer. He didn't give an angel. He didn't give a seraphim or a cherubim. He gave his only begotten son to you and I. Oh, friends, today, that's the gift in the heart of God because God knew you needed a Savior. He knew you needed salvation. And friends, as we encourage you in the Lord a moment ago, I don't care how weak you are. I don't care how, if you just got a little bit of smoke coming out. God's not going to punch that smoke. If you're a bruised reed this morning, God is not going to break that bruised reed and throw you away. He's going to heal the bruise and He's going to cause the, 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 the smoke to flame back into a flame of fire in your life as you lift your hearts to God. Can you say that God is a good God? today. Amen. Now we find here in this scripture right here that Jesus said that whatsoever you ask, you ask is going to be given to you. Whatever you knock is going to be open. Whatever you seek, you're going to find. You're going to receive what God, what you're asking God for. Jesus said, you ask nothing in my name. He said, now ask that you, and receive that your joy might be full. He wants us to ask in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know Jesus has a good record. Jesus has a great record in heaven. Amen. My record not so good sometimes. Jesus good all the time. Amen. Jesus has a great record in heaven all the time. And we can ask in that precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says, everyone that asketh us receiveth. He that seeketh findeth, and him that knocketh it shall be open. I know we can all tell stories about how good that our God is. Can you say that? That God is a good God. How many know God has done good things for you? How many have a testimony of God's goodness somewhere within your life? I could give you a number, but I'm going to give you one this morning. And uh, it, it happened when I was, as I was pastoring here in this church some years ago. As I was pastoring here, I had a car, and uh, the, the old car, uh, it, 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 it had a, an engine problem. It had a, a cracked head, I believe it was, on it. And, and the thing was, I had a 50,000-mile warranty on the car, and it just turned over 51,000 miles. Do you remember that, Angela? Do you remember that? It was your prayers that got, got, got me a, a blessing there. And as God had done something special for Doug and Angela, I don't remember what it was at that time. But I remember that, that Angela had prayed, and, and she didn't pray with me, but somebody said she prayed, God, you did this for us, do it for Jimmy. And when I, I thought, you know, this is going to be $1,000, a cracked head, that's a big expense. Now, that's several years ago. Today, it would be two or $3,000. But I went out to the dealership to get up my car and to get it back after they fixed the cracked head. The man that owned the place, he said to me, he says, I, 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 I took the, I backed this up and put it under warranty. You shouldn't have to pay for this, amen? He said that the Lord saved me at that time $1,000 or more because the man backed it up and put it under warranty. He says, I did put I did put a new set of plugs in it. I didn't say any sense not to. $27 and so many cents, if that's okay with you. Boy, was that okay with me. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> $27, $28 sounds a whole lot better than 1000 or whatever, amen? amen? That's the goodness of God. I see that man every now and then. I just saw him uh, probably a, a week or so. Well, I just love seeing that guy, amen? I'll never forget that fella as long as I live. I mean, it's just that many of you would know him. He's a, a prominent man here in town. And boy, is he, <laughs> is he really a nice guy. I really, I really appreciate him. I never forgot the kindness that God used him to do for me. Now, that's the goodness of God. Amen. You know, it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. Why doesn't God just drop everybody in hell, the, the bad ones, and get rid of Because God's a good God, and He's not willing that anybody should perish, but all should come to repentance. God's not willing that anybody should die. The goodness of God, that ring that falls on the sun that shines upon their face, the food that grows in their gardens or in the fields out west, whatever, is the goodness of God that's feeding those people, blessing those people, and God is doing that. So someday it's say, hey, there must be somebody up there that likes me. Amen. I was preaching a funeral the other day, and I got—I so got, I never had this happen before. 
that fiance, you know, I'm not going to say fiance, and they were talking about somebody, there, and I could not say fiance for anything in the world. I thought, I, I, and and they're, they're laughing at me. I just could not say that word. And finally I said, it's somebody, he loves somebody a whole lot. Amen. <laughs> and that's how I got her. And of course they laughed later on. I was, and not when I was able to say it, I finally got it down. But you see, there's somebody in heaven that loves you a whole lot. The Heavenly Father, the Son of God seated at his right hand, Loves you a whole lot. Amen. You know, the Bible says that God opens his hand. He, 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 he satisfies the desire of every living thing. Are you getting this today? God satisfies the desire of every... You look at the little microbes under the microscope and the little uh, flagella and all that stuff. All those little tiny creatures down there that we can't see with our naked eye. Or I'd be glad of it because it would look bad. But anyhow... That God feeds them somehow, amen? And you can run up through the food chain and, and up to the greatest wheels, and God feeds the greatest wheels with the plankton, amen? God opens his hand, and he, and you know, the sad thing is in this country, we need to come back to God because we can't even feed our babies today. That's right. Something's wrong in America. We've forsaken the fountain of living waters and, hold, and hewed ourselves out, broken cisterns that can hold no water, and that's what the problem is. We put our trust in man rather than putting our trust in God. Amen. I'll preach this again in the future. Hear what I'm saying today. We put our faith, at, there's no formula, or not much formula on the shelves. This is going to go on, they said, for months. Who would have thought, thought of such a thing that we couldn't feed our babies? Now, at the same time that we can't feed our babies, babies we got all these poor, deceived people marching out in the streets and saying, we want to kill more babies. We've got to have our abortion rights. My goodness, may God have mercy on, on their souls and on all of our souls. Amen? Take the life of an innocent little baby. All to keep their belly skinny. Well, honey, there's plenty of birth control out there. Buy some of it or have the doctor give you some and you won't get pregnant. Use your head for something besides uh, put hair curlers on Amen? Amen. Boy, we can do it all. Yeah. Can't we? Amen. We're just like on Star Trek. We're going to eliminate poverty and hunger and, and all these other things. No, we're not. Only God can do those kind of things. That's right. You know, it's a sad thing that in this country, we've had COVID strike this country for two years. You know the sad? There's a new wave coming. I read it in the paper just, I believe it was yesterday's paper. There's, and the front end of it is here, or just about here in West Virginia. It's another strain or a variant or whatever. You know, the thing was, we had an Operation Warp Speed, and I'm glad for that President Trump did that. Don't get me wrong. I've had the shots. Don't get me wrong. But I'm going to tell you something today. Our sufficiency is not of man. Our sufficiency is God. And we need to turn back to God and say, God, we're really sorry for the sins that we've done. Will you lift this plague off the land? When you lift this plague off, like, oh, that's the devil. No, you better read your Bibles and find out who's behind plagues before you start pointing fingers, friends. That's right. Are you hearing this today? That's right. Amen. You disagree with me if you want. All I have is Bible, and that's all I preach. Amen. And I've been preaching it harder. I can tell you that when I go to funerals now, I just give them the word. Amen? Amen. Amen. The other day, I preached on the whole pin trail. Oh, boy. On the prodigal son, I said, we've all walked the whole pin trail. We've all been down to the hog house. We've been stinky and dirty in sin, and only Jesus can cleanse us and, and make us right. Four people said they prayed the sinner's prayer with me, so God must have used it somehow. Church, when I ask you to pray for me and for the services, those funerals, that this is vital that you do so. This is vital that you, you say, well, Jim, are they really saved? I don't know. I love them in prayer. I told them to get in church and get in the Word of God about every time. And friends, that's all I can do, because most of them I'll never see again. And I'd rather do something than do nothing. I would rather do something, even if it's something wrong or, or, or not up to what it could be or ought to be. I mean, criticized for it because I don't make people come forth. But that's not what a funeral is for. You're there to celebrate the life and the memory of that person. I'm pushing it it is right now. Doing my best. Doing my best. You can give God all the glory because only God gives the increase. Only God saved those four people the other day. And all glory to God and the Lamb so far this year. From January the 1st on till, till now, somewhere around 78 people have prayed with me the sinner's prayer. So that's, that's a good God that gives, that gives that much love to people. That's a good God that gives that much love. That much mercy. It's a good God. It's not Jim's Jesus. Now, hallelujah. 
One last scripture here today, and, and this is one you need to put on your, on your mirror by your bedroom, vanity, or in your bathroom on, by you on your mirror. You gotta shave and brush your teeth or you might put up something worth looking at. Besides you. I didn't really didn't want to say that, but I thought I should. Okay. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 19. That is one of the scriptures we got early back in the charismatic renewal. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God your God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. What has Jesus done? He won the victory for all of us. He won the victory for all of us. If you doubt that, read Isaiah. We'll just read Isaiah, the last part of chapter 52, the last three verses or so, and read chapter 53 and find out what your Jesus has done for you. Find out that he bore your sicknesses and your infirmities. How he carried your sins and he got rid of all that. And all the things that he did, he made his grave with the rich and, and with the, the, the criminals in his death, and yet God raised him from the dead. Probably one of the greatest chapters in the Bible, Isaiah chapter 53. And friends, today, that's the message, finishing this up, is that God's hand is open today. And God's hand is not empty. God's hand is never empty. Look at Jesus feeding the 5,000 and the 4,000. When I give my offerings and my time to God, I'm putting something in the hands of God that God can work with. I'm laying up treasures in heaven. Amen. 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 Remember a fellow told me years ago, Dan, I remember Jim Nestor, James Nestor, used to have the service station, Larry and, and Denny's dad. You remember him, right? He says, why don't you go down and put some money in the bank and Started a savings account for a junior. He said there at the Barber County Bank. He's a nice fellow. And on that line. And uh, friend, I'm putting something in the heavens bank, but you see, my, it's not what, it's not who I am. It's who Jesus is. Do you get this this morning, church? That God's a good God. And God's been really good to you, and He's been really good to me. We've got some problems. We've got some battles. We've got some things to face, and we're going to face them together. And we're going to fight together, and we're going to win together. Amen? Amen. And Jesus has already won the victory. All we're going to do is enforce it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God and the Lamb forever. Father, thank you. Seal this word to our hearts. Seal it in victory. Seal it in joy. And seal it with expectation that good things are coming our way. In Jesus' name. In agreement, we say amen. amen. And then Paul come back today and...